What's up everyone, Ben with the BTC Sessions here, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Ledger Nano X. This is a hardware wallet for securing your Bitcoin. Hodl the Bitcoin. So the Ledger Nano X is a device that interfaces with software called Ledger Live, as well as some alternatives if you prefer. Uh, and it can be used via USB, USB-C, or Bluetooth. And so what comes in the package is your Ledger device, your connector cable, USB-C to USB, uh, a little attachment for keychain if you like, and then of course uh, your recovery sheet for writing down your backup as well as some other instructions, additional recovery sheets, and some stickers because stickers are fun. Um, and so we are going to dive in with how to set this bad boy up. So here we are with the Ledger Nano X. Now only a couple quick things to note here. Uh, it slides open as such. There are two buttons on the right and left, the little, uh, the little circular ones here. And on the left hand side, there is a USB-C port, which you can use to just simply charge via a wall socket or to charge via your computer or to interface with the Ledger Live software on your computer. Uh, for this, we're going to be using the uh, mobile app to access the Ledger Nano X. So to turn it on, just the left button, you're just going to press hold for a second. You can see it boots up and it says, welcome to the Ledger Nano X. Press the right button to continue. Uh, so you're going to need to download Ledger Live at the following URL and then press right. And I already have this um, on my computer and on my phone so I can continue. Press left or right buttons to browse through the menus and lists, and press both buttons to validate a selection. So if you want to select something, both buttons at once. Um, hold both buttons at any time to access the control center to power off and more. So if you want to turn off the device, you hold both and it'll give you an option to do such. Moving on, uh, start Ledger Live to get assistance during setup. And so now I can either set up as a new device or I can restore from a recovery phrase. And this is just a reminder, um, both buttons to get to the turn off screen here. So I basically got uh, two different options here, set up as a new device or restore. And since this is brand new, we're gonna go to set up as a new device and select with both buttons. Okay, so we're gonna choose a pin code of four to eight digits. So we're gonna keep it simple for this video, but I do recommend a sturdy passphrase when you select one. So we'll hit both. Okay, so we're just gonna do a simple one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Once you have more than four digits, you'll have the option of the check mark here, or you can still scroll through the the numbers, or you can backspace, okay? So I'm just gonna hit check mark, and we'll fill it in one more time. Okay, now it's gonna give me my recovery phrase. So I can go ahead and hit bold buttons. These are 24 words that are your only backup. Secure them carefully. So if you're new to Bitcoin, if you're new to the whole space, essentially what this is, is the device itself is kind of like the key to your online account. And what it's giving you is a backup key. If you lose the device or wreck it or anything like that, then these words are your backup. But you need to treat it like a key to your house. You don't want to hand it to a stranger because that stranger would then have access to whatever the key unlocks. And in this case, it is all of your Bitcoin. So keep it safe. Don't show it to anybody. So it's just going to cycle through. It's going to give me word by word. I'm just going to write all these down and then we will be back. Once I have cycled through all of my words, it tells me that I can go left to verify all of my words. Or if I wish to continue, I just hit bold buttons, which I will do now. And now it's going to ask me to confirm my recovery phrase. So what this looks like is it's going to say, what is word number one? And I can cycle through the list of words by pressing left and right on the buttons here. And one by one, I'm gonna go through and make sure that I have every single word in my entire 24 word phrase. So I'm gonna do that right now. By the way, every time you find the correct word, you tap with both 
buttons at the same time and that will select it. So you've got to do this for every word in your phrase and this is just a way to make sure that you definitely have this backup written down correctly. So I'll be back when I do that. So I cycled through every word and it says my device is now ready. So I'm going to hit the right button and I can access the dashboard and those are my, my two options essentially. So I hit both buttons. And here is my dashboard. Right now, there are no apps installed on this device. So what does that mean? Well, an app is essentially something that gives you access to sending and receiving a cryptocurrency on this device. So what we need to do is we need to pair it with the mobile app in order to actually install applications onto this device. So we're gonna jump over now to uh, my phone where I have the mobile app installed. Just one quick note before we get started here. If you'd like to see how Ledger Live on desktop works, then you can head over to my YouTube page here. And if you just do a quick search, you'll find a video of Ledger Live that I've put together. Now, I did do this using the Ledger Nano S instead of the Ledger Nano X in this video, but the process is essentially exactly the same. This will be in the links down below in the show notes. Let's get on with the rest of the video. So you are looking at an application called Ledger Live. It is available for iOS and Android, and this is how we're going to be interfacing with our Ledger Nano X today. And as I said, another option is the desktop version of this application. So we're just gonna go ahead and hit Get Started. We've got options of what device we have. We're gonna hit the Nano X, and then it asks what we'd like to do. Import something from our desktop, initialize an, as a new device, restore a recovery phrase, or use an initialized device. And we have already started up our device, so we're gonna click that last option. Now, a few quick security checklist items. Did you choose your pin yourself? Yes. Did you back up your recovery phrase yourself? Yes. And continue. And then we're gonna add a new Nano X. We can see ours pops up right away because it's on. If it doesn't pop up, make sure you just turn on the device before you do this. There we go. And it will give me a pairing code, which I can see on both the device and my phone. And I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And to validate that also, I also need to hit both buttons, or rather I need to scroll here on the device as well and I can either confirm or cancel and I select whichever one I want by hitting both buttons. So I saw it was the right uh, code, so I'm gonna hit both. And there we go. I can now see. There we go. And now it's checking that my device is indeed genuine. So that might take a second here. So do you want to allow the Ledger Nano? By the way, I apologize for the juggling here. It's tough to do this with two devices at once, but uh, yes, I'd like to either allow or deny. I'm going to allow by hitting both buttons. Okay, pairing successful. I can now hit, uh, I can rename it or I can hit continue. So uh, let's just rename it to uh, BTC Sessions. And I'll confirm that. Okay, so it's just asking if I'd like to rename it and I confirm that on the device as well. Okay, pairing successful. I can hit continue. All right, now password lock. Uh, this is password lock. Okay, if I'd like a password for this actual, um, the actual app on my phone, so I'm gonna go ahead and just, uh, I'll just put password for this one which is not at all secure, and I would never use that as an actual password. And confirm. All right, unlock with fingerprint. If you'd like to do that, I'm gonna do that so that this video is easy to make. And I'm gonna hit continue. Remember your password, do not share it. Losing your password requires resetting the app. Um, resetting Ledger Live does not affect the assets on your device, okay? So just so you know, if you delete this app on your phone, it will not affect any funds that you have allocated to your Ledger Nano X, so got it? Okay, analytics and bug reports. Do I wanna send this information? I'm gonna hit no, and I'm gonna hit continue. And then I'm gonna go ahead, hooray, confetti, open Ledger Live. Okay, so um, again, safety notices, 
all that kind of stuff. Okay, so here's what we need to do. Now this takes a little bit of going back and forth. So what I need to do is I need to install um, an application onto this device so that I can utilize Bitcoin with it. Because right now it's just like an empty shell. There's, there's no applications on the Ledger Nano X itself other than general settings. Okay, so we're gonna go to Manager, which is down at the bottom. Here's all your menu in the app here. Portfolio, Accounts, Transfer, Manager, and Settings. We're gonna go to Manager because this is what we need to do. Okay, so we're going to select our device. And then it's going to give us an app catalog. All right, so this uh, device allows you to interface with lots of different cryptocurrencies. Of course, you guys know me, and it's kind of Bitcoin or nothing. So uh, at least as far as wanting to secure it anyways. Uh, and so we're going to download the Bitcoin app via this uh, this actual application on my phone, and it will install remotely into the Ledger Nano X. Okay, so here you can see the list of different, I mean, there's a ton of different coins here that I am super not interested in. Uh, but that's okay, because we only need to add one. We're gonna add Bitcoin. So I'm gonna hit download. It says installing. Okay, so it has installed the app and actually we can see it here on our uh, Ledger Nano S as, as well. We see Bitcoin there. If we had installed anything else, that would be an option that we could toggle between. Uh, and now it's saying that we need to go to accounts. So we're gonna tap on that button. This is all part of the setup here. So now we still need to add an account on our actual app so that we can interface with the device. Now I know this seems a little cumbersome, like there's there's a few extra steps here. Once it's all set up, it's pretty simple though. Okay, so I'm gonna hit add accounts and we're just gonna hit, again, add accounts. We want to add a Bitcoin account to our BTC Sessions device. And now it says, open the Bitcoin app on your Ledger Nano X. So how do we do that? Again, as I said, we can cycle through our various settings here. We just go to Bitcoin and we tap with both buttons. It says application is ready. And that should, there we go. Okay, so once it goes through synchronization, it will automatically create by default a single Bitcoin account. Now, if you see here, it's telling me that I can swipe sideways, and that means I can edit the name of this. So I'm just gonna edit this to be called uh, Bitcoin Test, and we'll apply that. And you just check it off if you wanna add that account, and we hit Continue. Okay, account successfully added. You can add more accounts. You can have multiple Bitcoin accounts if you choose, but we're just gonna go to accounts now. So uh, now we can see a few things. So let's do an overview here. Um, at the bottom here, if we go to portfolio, this would be a summation of all of all of our transactions and um, basically our balance of all assets that we have allocated to this device. Again, for me, I'm only dealing in Bitcoin, so it would just be like a summary of how much Bitcoin I have across however many Bitcoin accounts, and it's equivalent in dollars or whatever my local currency may be. If I go to accounts down at the bottom here, again, right now there's only one because we only set up one, but if I tap on that, then I can see, of course, all of the transactions within that account, and there haven't been any yet, but we will see some shortly. Secondly, or thirdly here, if I go to transfer at the bottom, I get the option of send, receive, and buy, and they do have a way to buy via the app, which myself being in Canada, I tend not to buy with credit cards. I like to buy with money I actually have. Um, down at the bottom, of course, we've already been to manager, but that's where you install other applications. Now there's the app catalog. There's also the device, and this is if you want to update the firmware, so on and so forth, or rename it, whatever, that's fine, or remove it from the app, you can do that as well. And finally, settings in the bottom right, this is a lot of different stuff here. So you can go to your general, you can change your local currency, which I'm going to do that right now to Canadian dollars. And other than that, you choose where you're getting your rates from, password lock, fingerprint, 
Um, and then if you want to convey any information to Ledger, which I opted out of. Um, beyond that, just some basics, some help, experimental features, anything like that. Uh, but we're not going to go into that right now. We're just going to start playing around with our actual uh, Ledger Nano S. So we are now going to practice receiving Bitcoin into our Ledger Nano X via the application here. Uh, so you can do this a couple different ways. On the portfolio screen, if there have been no transactions, you can hit the receive button there. Or you can go to accounts and click on the account in question and hit receive. Or you can go to transfer down at the bottom. And again, that gives you the options of uh, send and receive. So I'm going to hit receive via that option. I'm gonna click on what I would like there. Um, now this depends on you actually still being connected to the device, the pin number is put in, and I have my Bitcoin app on the device actually open as well. So I click BTC Sessions, and we'll connect with the device, and it asks me to verify the address on the device. So I get this screen with a scannable QR code, and I get on my device as well confirmation of what this address should read so I'm not getting screwed by malicious software on my phone, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna copy this address with the copy address button there. And I'm gonna navigate to another phone app that I have open. This is Blockstream Green. I did a video on this wallet separately, which I will link below if you'd like to take a look at this mobile app here. So I'm just going to hit send in this app. Uh, I'm going to paste in the address. And I'm going to actually send everything in this wallet over to my Ledger Nano X. So I'm going to hit send all funds. And uh, I'd like it to be pretty quick. So I'm gonna do that fast. I'm gonna hit review. Everything looks good to me. Address looks good. I'm gonna slide to send. Okay. Okay, so that has been sent. Let's go back to Ledger Nano X. All right. And so we will be receiving Bitcoin into this account. Um, now I'm not sure if there we go. Okay, so I just saw the address change here. And the way that Bitcoin wallets work, by and large, is that every time you receive money to a particular address, it will, by default, create a brand new one for you. So now in the actual app, you can see a few things going on. You can see some, some things happening. You can see that I have a Bitcoin balance, uh, the equivalent Canadian balance. Um, and actually you can see that I can track my balance over the course of a week, a month, or a year by toggling down below. Okay. Uh, I still have the send and receive buttons and I can see now in my list of transactions, there is a single transaction that is incoming. It is not confirmed yet. That will likely take a few minutes um, to be fully confirmed and spendable. I can also see if I go to portfolio, it gives me an overall look at all of my assets, which is only a single account with a single transaction right now. But if I had more, they would show up here as well. And actually, it looks like it's already confirmed. I just switched from receiving to received. So that should now be spendable. So since our funds are confirmed, let's try sending back out. So I'm going to go back to my blocks from green. I'm going to hit receive. And I now have an address here that I will copy. I can just tap and it'll copy to the clipboard. We'll head back over. Okay, so again, we have our options here. I can go to accounts and uh, click send and receive below this account, or I can go to transfer and I get the same options there. So I'm gonna hit send, and I can either scan a QR code if I have one in front of me, or I can paste in an address. Uh, so I'll do that and I'll hit continue. And how much would I like to send? Um, it tells me the amount available there. Now, uh, unfortunately here, what I, one of the, my gripes with this is I don't have a send all option. Um, they used to have that, I believe, when it used to be a, an application within your Google browser, but that is not the case anymore. So I'd love to see that come back. Uh, so I'm just gonna send out a simple amount. I'm gonna hit 100 Canadian dollars there. I'm gonna hit continue. Okay, so from Bitcoin test to the address that I pasted in, uh, this is the amount of Bitcoin and the amount of Canadian dollars, my network fees, I can edit the fees. So let's take a look at what that looks like. 
I have options of high, standard, and low, or custom, which is great. I like to see options there. And uh, yeah, so that looks good. I'll hit confirm there. And it tells me everything that I'm spending. And I'm going to go ahead and hit continue. Again, uh, my device is still connected and it's on the Bitcoin app, although it did just turn off, so I better uh, enter my PIN one more time. It's surprisingly difficult to hold two devices like this. Okay, okay, so it's unlocked. There we go. Okay, so I select my device, connecting. Okay, so it's going to bring up my, there we go. Okay, so I'm going to review my transaction on the device itself. Review output one. I'm sending this amount to this address and I'm going to accept that or reject it. Accept, confirm transaction. My fees, accept and send. Okay, and I can see that my transaction has been sent. So I can go ahead and hit close. So we can see the transaction is currently sending here on our main screen and also via our account screen. If we go into Bitcoin test, we'll see the same thing. If I navigate out to Blockstream Green, I can see that I have an unconfirmed transaction that is on its way in. Uh, and with that, that's pretty much it when it comes to sending and receiving transactions. Now, one other thing I'd like to do here is within the accounts section. So we'll just go back and this is just through the toggle at the bottom. Um, if we do want to add another account, we can hit plus. We can hit add accounts. We can choose what we'd like to add. So if I'd like a separate Bitcoin account, I can do that in the BTC sessions. And I'm still connected to the device. So everything's all good. By the way, at any time, if it tells you you're not connected, you'll just need to go on the device and re-put in your PIN, and you should be okay. At worst case scenario, if you're having troubles, just turn off the device and then turn it back on, and you should be fine. So now it gives me the option of adding a new account. Now, I believe it won't let you add a second account until you've already utilized the first one. Uh, so what I can do here is rename this uh, to, say, We'll just say Bitcoin 2. We'll apply, check it off, continue. Great, and I can go to accounts. So now that we have that, we can see that we've actually got two separate accounts. We've got Bitcoin Test, Bitcoin 2, and uh, this one has no incoming or outgoing transactions, whereas the other one we've already been utilizing does. So you can have separate accounts within your ledger uh, to keep all of your funds separate if one account is for something different. So the last thing I want to take a look at with this device is setting up a passphrase. And what this will do by adding a passphrase to your Ledger Nano X is create a totally secondary account, not just an account in the sense that we just made, but essentially a different backup phrase that links to a totally different set of accounts. And why would this be useful is, well, if somebody's trying to get your funds and they are perhaps threatening you with physical violence and you want plausible deniability, you can actually tie a separate PIN number to a set of dummy accounts that look like they've been used and maybe have a smaller amount of funds in it. But if you put in the dummy PIN number, then they will only see those tiny accounts as opposed to your real stash. So it's really a great feature for this and the Ledger Nano S as well has this available. So we're just going to get out of this application. So we're just going to go to the side here. We were in our Bitcoin. We're just going to hit both buttons to quit. And now we're back on the dashboard. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over to the control center and we're going to select. Oh, actually, you know what? Control center, as it tells me, <laughs> as I realize, is holding both buttons. So let's take a look at what's there. Hold both buttons. It takes you to the control center. I can see my battery. I can see I can lock the device. I can turn on and off Bluetooth, which is good for those of you that are worried about Bluetooth. Or I can go to settings or power off. So I'm going to go into settings, general, security, 
are back. So let's check out security. I can change my pin. I can add a passphrase, which we're gonna do. Auto lock, reset, all of that is in here. So we're gonna take a look at passphrase. Okay. So we can attach it to pin or set a temporary one. So we're gonna to attach to pin because that's gonna be our dummy. Okay, advanced feature, read passphrase manual, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so we're gonna set a secret passphrase. We're gonna choose a pin code for that passphrase. So we had one, two, three, four. We're gonna do uh, one, two, three, four, five. Just as an example, one, two, three, four, five. Good, and one more time. Okay, enter secret passphrase. So this is where you actually have to pick another word that you'd like to add. Now, you, I believe you can add multiple words, but uh, you can have upper and lower case, you can have numbers, you can really have anything. So we're just gonna uh, use something relatively simple. So again, we'll just do password. And also, I don't advise using this. <laughs> okay, confirm secret passphrase. And that looks good to me. Confirm with current pin code. Now when it says, as I just realized, when it says confirm with current pin code, it means the original pin code that you set up first. So we did one, two, three, four, and then our dummy is one, two, three, four, five. It means the first one. So my mistake there. One. Okay, all right, so now we have a dummy account if we put in the incorrect passphrase. So if we do one, two, three, four, five, rather than one, two, three, four, we will not be able to access the original accounts that we had, okay? So let's just take a look at what that looks like. So here's what we're gonna do to actually see what adding a passphrase does. Now, this is the tricky thing about having the Ledger Nano X app or the Ledger Live app on your phone is no matter what, there's going to be these accounts associated with your device and these are transparent. You can just kind of see what's there. Um, so what we actually need to do is we're gonna remove these accounts from my device so they're not visible. Okay, so I'm gonna go in here, there's a little settings uh, wrench in the top right, and I'm gonna hit remove account from portfolio. I'm gonna delete. I'm gonna do the same with this one, and I'm going to remove account from portfolio and delete it. Okay, so we can now see that there are no accounts on my phone that are visible. And so let's see how it reacts differently to adding accounts based on the pin number that we put into our device. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the device, the Ledger Nano S, I'm gonna hold both buttons, and I'm gonna turn it off, okay? So I'm going to power off. Now we're gonna turn it back on and we're going to put in our original pin number, the one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, and we're gonna open up the Bitcoin app while we're at it. Okay, so that is open and good to go. And we're gonna see what it looks like when we hit add accounts. Add accounts, we're gonna add a Bitcoin account from BTC Sessions, which is open and ready to pair. So when we go to pair here, it will start to kind of look for any accounts that have received money and it sees it right away and I can add that account. It can also add a secondary account if I'd like to do that at the same time. So I don't wanna do that right now. I'm gonna go back out, I'm going to cancel and I'm back to normal. Now let's take a look at how it reacts when I turn off the device and I turn it back on and I use the alternative passphrase that we created. So this time we're gonna use one, two, three, four, five. Okay, and once again, we're gonna open up Bitcoin. 
Okay, so we've used the dummy passphrase. We're going to hit add accounts this time. Add accounts, add a Bitcoin account, BTC sessions, and it'll connect. And now it's going to take a look for what it can find. And as you can see, there is no detected Bitcoin at all allocated to this device when I put in the alternative passphrase. So to an attacker, they would assume that you don't have any Bitcoin. Or if I had received a small amount to an account with the dummy passphrase, then all that would appear is this small amount in that segregated account associated with that PIN number and not my other account with the shorter one that I had, we had already created. So this is a good way to kind of hide what you have, but it's also dependent on you not having those accounts readily accessible and auditable on the device already on your phone. So keep that in mind if you're trying to hide what's on, on your ledger that you don't have it just willy-nilly in your app for everybody to see if they get a hold of your phone. You need that plausible deniability there. But regardless, still a really cool way of kind of hiding what you may have accessible to you. So there's a lot to talk about when it comes to the Ledger Nano X and uh, whether it's for you or whether it's not. So um, my impressions here are the device itself. It's sleek, it's small, it's convenient, it's easy to carry around. So it gets points for that. Uh, the app itself has a great UI, it's nice and clean, and it's pretty easy to use after the initial setup is finished. Um, but let's address the elephant in the room, and that is the Bluetooth connectivity. So a lot of people are super concerned about Bluetooth connectivity and that is not to be completely dismissed or it's not unwarranted. Um, there's been recent reports that basically every Bluetooth device out there is pwned and can be accessed. Uh, but also we need to take into account how Bluetooth is being utilized on this device itself. Um, so number one, Ledger does assume that the Bluetooth is compromised anyways. And so what data is actually being sent via Bluetooth is not to do with your private keys, but it's actually the encrypted signed transaction data. So it's an encrypted message saying that you approve a transaction to be sent from one location to another. Um, so nothing to do with your private keys there. Um, so if that transmission was intercepted between your device and your phone, well, one, it's encrypted, so not a lot can be done with that in the first place and somebody, unless somebody breaks encryption, in which case we're all in trouble. But two, um, if they do get a, a hold of your, your signed transaction data, well, essentially what they can do is they can just broadcast the transaction. Um, so there's that. Uh, but I will say that with complexity, comes more attack vectors. And so again, the Bluetooth thing should not be dismissed. If it makes you worried, there is an option to turn off the Bluetooth on this device and you can just use the cord to connect directly to your computer or your phone if you choose to do so. Um, it pretty much just boils down to personal preference and your use case. Um, now I want to bring up one thing and that is that Imperfect security is no excuse for not having any security, any security at all. So, um, you know, having a, a second factor like this is already a step above just having a plain hot wallet on your phone, like the, you know, like any downloadable, simple, simple to use Bitcoin wallet that does not have an associated device with it. So already it's a little bit more secure in that aspect. Um, but beyond that, what are some things that I would like to see out of this? Well, we, you saw during the video, of course, I'd like to see that send all function. That would be wonderful. I do like that you can turn off the Bluetooth. Um, but for me, I am more into some of the more 
uh, privacy-centric and advanced features like coin control, understanding what coins I'm spending and what is compromising my security, or not my security, but my privacy, and what is not. And so because of that, I might utilize something like this uh, in concert with a separate set of software. So not the Ledger Live software, because again, that could be privacy compromising in that you may be leaking data to Ledger that you would not like to leak in terms of how much Bitcoin you own and what you're utilizing and where you're sending it. Um, so you could use it in conjunction with something like the Wasabi wallet that default connects via Tor. And so I've done a video on Wasabi and I showed myself utilizing the cold card wallet with that but you can also use other hardware wallets with wasabi wallets so i encourage you to check out that video you can also use this wallet with electrum uh, which is another desktop based wallet and you can connect it that way uh, i believe not via bluetooth but using the cord um, and that gives you more control over your coins and which coins you're spending and which coins you're keeping segregated instead of just giving you kind of a blanket balance without any insight into what's actually sitting there and where it came from. Um, so realistically, when I look at this device, I think that it's a convenient on the go thing when it comes to using the mobile app. Um, on its own, I don't think I would use it by, by itself because of the way that I've been thinking more about privacy and security. I don't think I would use the Ledger Live software by itself um, for large sums of money just because I'm a little bit more privacy conscious, but I would use it for day to day and have this as a convenient uh, carry along device just as extra added security for my day to day spending. Um, the other thing that would be great with this um, is utilizing it as a multi-sig solution. So you could have your ledger you can also have a Trezor and perhaps a cold card and use those all in conjunction as a two of three multi-sig setup. And if you're kind of glazing over because you're new to Bitcoin, don't worry too, too much. I will be doing a video on this, but essentially you can have it so that you have um, a pool of funds and you are not allowed to send money out until you confirm not only via, say, your ledger, but also via at least one other device, maybe maybe multiple other devices. So you can set it up so that even if the security of this is imperfect and you have other devices that have different security trade-offs, when you use them in conjunction together, all of those trade-offs are kind of overwritten because somebody would have to compromise every single device at the same time or multiple devices at the same time. So uh, something to think about, but all in all, I do enjoy the Ledger Nano X quite a bit. Again, like I said, it's pretty sleek. It's pretty easy to use. Um, I would just modify it to use according to my needs. So let me know what you thought of the Ledger Nano X. Do you have one? Have you played around with it? Are you thinking about getting one? Um, and uh, leave a comment down below with what you think. And with that, guys, I'm going to sign off. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you're new here, hit like, subscribe, and share. Always hit share. It's great to get new eyeballs on the videos. And if you want to support the show, you can hit up either of my sponsors. I have two of them. Uh, number one is uh, NordVPN. You can check them out. This is to help hide your IP address. It helps encrypt your browsing data and has the added benefit of allowing you to unblock geoblock content. And second, my main sponsor of the show, Ledin.io. This is where you can use your Bitcoin for a couple of different services, one of which is to use it in a savings account and earn interest on your Bitcoin paid in Bitcoin. And the second of which is to secure a Canadian or US dollar loan using your Bitcoin as collateral. So you can check out those in the links I provide down below. Also, if you opt to get a loan through Ledin, they will give you an additional $50 worth of Bitcoin into your account. And with that, I am out. Have yourselves a wonderful evening and I will see you guys next time for your daily session.